Hey guys, what's up? Codeforge here. Today we will be setting up H2 in memory database for our Java Spring Boot application. So, as you can see on the screen, we will enable Web Console for our H2 database. We will uh, set it up and also we will create a table for the person entity and also we'll create a record to test out our configuration of the h2 database now let's move to the spring boot initializer to check out the project structure and dependencies and later on we'll code something so here we are in the spring boot initializer almost everything is default i have changed the group to com.code for youtube and the artifact name to h2 setup and now let's add dependencies so we will start with the h2 database of course and this is in memory database which we will use so we need this dependency also we'll need jpa to create tables entities and entries and the last dependency that we will need is the spring web so our application and we'll start on the port 8080 and we will be able to access the H2 console. This is all we need so we can generate the project and open it in the IDE. Okay, I have imported the project and let's go to the application properties because this is the place where we will spend most of the time today. So it's over here. Also, I will increase the font size. To enable web console which one you have seen at the beginning of this video we have to use the property which is called spring.h2.console.enabled and we have to set it to true because by default it is set to false next property which we want to set up is the path on which the web console is available by default it is set to the slash h2 console but we'll override it with our value it will be shorter so we'll say spring dot h2 dot console dot path and we'll set it to the slash h2 next thing we want to define is the database url and h2 can work in two modes first one is in memory and the second one is file mode in the first place we will use in memory and later on to show you how to configure it we will use the file mode to define url we want to say spring.datasource.url and now we have to specify the url so it will be jdbc we want to use h2 we want to use memory mode and the name of our db will be memdb and this is pretty much everything or we can also add additional parameter so we have to use the semicolon and we can say db close delay and we want to set it to the minus one thanks to that parameter the h2 database connections will not be closed as long as the jvm with our spring boot application will work so it will prevent situations like you are coding something you are starting your application and in the meantime you have decided to make some coffee you are coming back you want to test something and it appears that the connection with the database is closed okay so let's move on next on our list is the driver class name so it is the spring data source driver class name and we'll set it to the org dot h2 dot driver and this is pretty much everything and two last properties that we need for the database connections are username and the password so let's define user in the first place it will be spring data source dot username and we'll set it to the default value as a but if you want you can change it later and the password by default is set to the uh, empty password and we'll also leave it 
by default but i'm showing you those two properties so you know how to modify them if you need to okay so this is all we need for now it should already work so we go to the maven we are clicking the h2 setup which is our project plugins spring boot plugin and we want to use the spring boot run and after a few seconds our application should be up and running on the port 8080 because this is the default port of the spring boot and it should be good yes it's working on the port 8080 so let's check out the console i have opened the web browser and we are here on the local host port 8080 which is the default and you can see that we have this path set to h2 by default it is h2-console and the rest has been attached by the application so uh, over here we can see the jdbc url it is a little bit different than what we have uh, over here so it will not work right now we have to change it so we have to change it to the jdbc h2 the mode mem and we have to set it to the mem db which is the name of an, our database and the user is correct yes and we have the empty password so we should be good to connect we also can test the connection we can see that test is successful so we can enter to our h2 database and it is empty for now but later on we'll create table and the entity we can close it for now and also we can stop the application hide this one and this one so our web console and in-memory database are working now we want to create entity and persist some data so we have to go to the java our main package and inside we want to create a new package and we'll call it model later on we will also need the repository so let's create a package for it and let's call it repository in the model now we want to create a new class so we right click it new java class and let's call our class person so we'll persist persons first of all to create an entity we have to mark our class with the entity annotation so we'll say entity and now we have to define some properties so first one will be long type and it will be id and it will have two additional properties let's say it will be final string and it will be first name and we will also have private final string and it will be last name so we will have the person entity it will be mapped to the person table and every person will have id first name and last name our entity needs the primary key and to mark property as the primary key we can use the id annotation and in our case it will be this property over here so we want to make it primary key and we say id from the java persistence we also don't want to take care of the value generation for this primary key so we'll say it is the generated value and by default the strategy is set to auto but we'll set it explicitly so we say strategy generation type auto okay so we have the primary key we have two properties which are final and now we are getting the error so we have to create the constructor so we'll generate one we don't want the constructor uh, with the id parameter because it will be the auto generated value we will not take care of it so we'll create it for the first name and the last name and also it will be nice to generate getters for our properties so we will also generate it and now it looks good you can also see that we got rid of the error for the first name and the last name 
final properties and this is because now we have the constructor and both of them are initialized so now we can create our repository and persist some objects so we can create a new interface in our repository package so we select this one we select interface and we will call it person repository creating a repository in the spring boot is really easy uh, first of all we have to create interface we already have one and now our interface has to extend the crude repository interface and it is generic type so we have to provide the entity for which we want to create the repository in our case it will be person and also we have to provide the primary key the type of the primary key and in our case it was the long so we have to provide the long and also we have to import the person and yeah so to summarize it we have the person which is the name of our class and also the primary key which is the type of long and if we go back over here we can see that it is the type of long and our repository is good to go it would be also nice to mark it as the repository so we will use the repository annotation over here and we hit enter and now it's good so we go to the main of our application right now i will zoom it a little bit okay so first of all we want to access the context we'll create a new object for this we say configurable application context with the same name and we want to assign to it the result of the run method and now we can use this object to get the bin from the context and we want to retrieve the person repository and we will do it that way and now we want to store this person repository in the person repository variable like this now we want to create an object of the type person so we say person we'll say that this variable will be called my person or this object and now we can use the constructor so we will say new person and let's say it will be john doe okay so we have our person and now all we have to do to persist it in the database is to use our person repository in the person repository we have the method that is called save and we can simply pass our object there and it will create we are creating the object and then we are persisting it into the database thanks to that repository so you can see how simple it is now if we start the application we should get the table uh, which will be called person and also it should have one entry with the john doe and id with the auto generated value so we will start the application it is up and running and now let's open the web console so here it is and the url is correct so now we can connect and we have the person table over here you can click it select run and as you can see we have one entry in the person table and it is john doe with the id one so you can see how it works everything right now is happening in the memory of our application if we turn off uh, our application all the data will be lost if for some reason you don't want to lose your data each time you are restarting the application and entering new data is very time consuming and you need it for your test you can use the file mode of the h2 database and we'll use it right now we can close it for now stop the application and hide the windows first of all we have to go back to the application properties and adjust the url and right now we don't need this db close delay and also we can change the mode of the database from mem which stands for memory to file 
And now we also have to specify the path where our file database will be stored. And we'll use the dot slash and we'll store it in the data directory in our project and we'll call it file db. We have to set one more property over here and it is spring.jpa.hibernate.ddl-auto and by default this property is set to create drop and we want to set it to update. It is worth to mention that create drop value is default for this property for the in-memory databases and Spring is detecting that we are using H2 which is the in-memory database or embedded database even if we are using this file mode. So we have to override and set it to update. So now we can start it. We go to the Maven Spring Boot Run it should be up and after a few seconds it's up and now let's we'll stop it so one entry has been created with the join though from here right and now if we start it second time the second entry should be created so we are not losing any data so we have to wait it is up and running we are bringing up the console but first let's open the properties and now we have to adjust the URL of the database. Now it will be file. Yeah, it will be this one. So we have to set it exactly the same way as we have it in the properties. So now it's good. We can connect. We can click the person table, run it and we can see that we have two entries for John Doe so our data is being stored and we are not losing anything if we will start the application again we will get another entry and so on and by the way we can see over here and uh, this data directory that has been created if you don't see it you have to right click it and refresh the content in my case it is reload from disk and inside we can see our database with the same name which is the file db and we have defined it over here in the url of our data source okay so this is all for today i hope you enjoyed we will for sure use h2 database in the future because i am planning to create some videos about the jpa and if you want to be notified about the new content new videos that i'm creating Remember about hitting the subscribe button and turning on the notifications. You can also leave a comment under the video or click the like button. Stay tuned and see you next time guys.